Well lads, what's the crack and welcome back to another new video here in KDFG and today we're back with more Premier League predictions as they're predicting the midweek match week of match week 22. Now after a long sloggy January with only one Premier League match week split over two weeks which was a very very boring two weeks. It felt almost as if it was an international break and two weeks ago if I'm being honest. But after an FA Cup weekend we are now finally back to proper Premier League football which I really do like to see. We've got a couple of cracking fixtures coming up this weekend or this midweek as well so before we do waste more, too much more time here make sure you are subscribed 88% of you who watch my videos are still not subscribed so if you are a new viewer and you're letting me content make sure you are subscribed make sure you like the video as well and also click the bell and click on notifications or really this help and support the channel and well then let's jump in the way Premier League predictions for Match Week 22 so we're starting off then up at the city ground as Nottingham Forest hosts Arsenal as Tuesday night. Very interesting one this one of course. Obviously you know Arsenal should definitely be the favourites coming into this one. They've had a long long break I think near a uh, week and a half and pushing two weeks break though because uh, they were knocked out early on in the FA Cup so they should definitely be a lot more well rested than Nottingham Forest who drew nil nil I do believe at home to Bristol City in their FA Cup uh, game there over the weekend. So I think Forest definitely will be a lot uh, less rested than Arsenal and with Arsenal having the stronger side as well, they should be the favourites in this one. However, I don't think Arsenal's actually won at the city ground in their past three um, visits to Nottingham. So that isn't a really promising uh, stat there at all for the Gunners. Look, you know, I think it's going to be, it could go either way. Like, it could definitely could go either way. So, well, especially with Arsenal in bad form as well, despite winning their last match 5-0 at home to Crystal Palace. But I mean, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what does go down here at the city ground. Um, well, here's what I think is going to go down here between Nottingham Forest and Arsenal. I want to say half time it's nil nil in this one neither side will find a breakthrough however within the first five minutes of the second half I'm going to say Nottingham Forest will take the lead in this one I'm going to say Morgan Gibbs White will get the opening goal of the match it's going to be very well where counter attack by Nottingham Forest and in the end they will be the team who takes an early lead here in the second half as the Gunners will be trailing one, trailing one nil here at midweek then I'm going to say the Gunners will start to uh, come into the game more and dominate more of the possession. Then I'm going to say with half an hour left in the match, they will finally strike an equaliser through Kai Havertz. We're going to say we'll get in the end of a scrappy cross from Leandro Trossard, we'll say. And in the end here, Havertz equaliser Daphne will put the Gunners fans in the high spirits as they'll be drawn 1-1. One -one. It's still half an hour to find the winner. But will they find that winner? No, they won't. Nottingham Force, however, will find that winner. I'm going to say with 10 minutes to go here, Chris Wood will get in the end of a delightful cross from Morgan Gibbs Wade. He'll bullet header it in past David Raya. And in the end here, I'm going to say the Kiwi will save all three points here for Nottingham Forest as Arsenal will fall to yet another defeat here in the Premier League on the road. So Nottingham Forest 2, Arsenal 1. That's what I've gone with here in this one. I think in the end, you know, Forest obviously still playing well under Nuno Espirito Santo and the very, very good record at home to Arsenal as well will help them. And with Arsenal not being in the best form at all at the moment either, I'm going to set a slip up to another defeat here as Arteta will really have to start thinking about possibly um, turning his rumours about leaving at the end of the season into reality. So Forest 2, Arsenal 1, that's what I've gone with here then in this one. Next match then, see us go down to Craven College as Fulham are hosting Aberdeen. Both these sides lost their FA Cup round four matches over the weekend. Fulham lost 2 0 at home to Newcastle United, so they're out of the cup, and as well as that, Aberdeen are out of the cup thanks to a 96th minute winner there, where they lost 2 1 at home to Luton Town in the end. So, you know, both these sides may not be coming into this one uh, with two high spirits, however, both sides will need to be motivated and determined to get something out of this one. Will either side win though? I can't really see either side winning this one. It's one of the games where neither side will be separated it's going to be quite evenly matched and in the end here one all draw probably will be the fair enough result between the two sides I'm going to say at half time though the Cottagers will be in the lead I'm going to say with about five minutes left in the half Andreas Pereira will find the back of the net from a free kick it's going to be an amazing free kick from the Brazilian and in the end here Fulham probably will be the better side in the first half and a delightful Pereira free kick will have them 1-0 up then at home to the Toffees then I'm going to say in the second half, the Toffees will be the better side. And Fulham is really going to be a game of two halves here. And I'm going to say right in the halfway point of the second half, we're going to see Jack Harrison get an equaliser for the Toffees. He'll make it 1-1 on this one. And ultimately, he will save a point here for Everton away from home. So Fulham 1, Everton 1. That's what I've gone with here in this one. As I do think here, Silva and Deitch's men will cannot be separated. It's going to be a game of two halves here, really. And at the end here, draw probably will be the fair enough result between Fulham and Everton. Next 
next match then we go to Kenilworth Road as Luton Town are hosting Brighton. Now Luton obviously should be coming into this one in high spirits after a massive win away at Goodison Park in the FA Cup sending themselves into round 5. Brighton also sent themselves into round 5 as well with a very very uh, convincing 5-2 victory away at Sheffield United like so. Very very good stuff there from the Seagulls. They were scoring goals left right and centre there in that one. However they definitely very well should be able to. They definitely very well will um, find this one a wee bit trickier I think at Kenilworth Road I think in the end though Brighton should still get it done I think Luton definitely will put it up to them however I'm going to say here Brighton will still get a comfortable 2-0 victory here away at Kenilworth Road I'm going to say at half time here it's going to be 2-0 Brighton it'll be amazing in the first half of the Seagulls and I'm going to say after about 15 minutes Pascal Gross will open the scoring in this one the German from midfield will make it 1-0 here and then I'm going to say 15 minutes on from that on the half an hour mark Evan Ferguson will head in from a corner he'll double the lead in this one and the young Irishman will get the second goal in this one and that will ultimately seal all three points here away from home so Luton nil, Brighton 2 that's what I've gone with here in this one as I do think here you know Luton definitely will put it up to them however I think Brighton on the day will be very very good and really will be in no doubt of getting anything less than all three points here away from home next match then we go down to Selhurst Park as Crystal Palace are hosting Sheffield United very very interesting one this one and a very very big game this one as well like not only for Sheffield who are still trying to you know claw up the points like and uh, try and um, get out of the relegation zone under Chris Wilder but it's also for Palace as well because they are in a poor uh, run of form at the moment they are doing terrible and Roy Hodgson is under serious pressure from losing his job like you know you think here they're at home you surely think Crystal Palace will have enough quality to get over the line however I know they got uh, uh, duffed in the FA Cup however though Sheffield still definitely very well can get a result from here from this one I think in the end Crystal Palace will be the better side in this one overall and they should be able to get the win however I'm going to say in the end they'll be very very poor at, um, at, at taking their chances and at the end here will fall to a 1-1 draw at home with the Blades I want to say at half time here Palace will be all over the Blades they'll lead 1-0 at the break through Aberiki Eze and yeah it's going to be an amazing first half here for Crystal Palace as they lead 1-0 but then I'm going to say in the second half they will continue to create chances and will continue to be the dominant side however they will not be able to put any of them chances into the back of the nets and then I'm going to say with about 5 or 10 minutes left in the match Sheffield are going to punish them and the young striker Osula who's been getting a good few stars uh, for the Sheffield United over the past couple of games I'm going to say then he will get his first Premier League goal and he will save the Blades a massive point here away at Zathurst Park so Crystal Palace won Sheffield United won that's what I've gone with here in this one as I do believe although Palace will be the good side better side in this one they will uh, fall poor to a draw and in the end here Palace fans will remain frustrated that they will once again have another a must win game go a begging with, a ze with a zero three points only a point to uh, their name and well serious pressure will start to mount in Roy Hodgson's name as he as, as Palace's bad run of form will only continue here with a poor draw at home to Shapley United next match then this arguably could even be the biggest match of the uh, match week here but it's Aston Villa hosting Newcastle United what a game this is going to be here lads I mean if you look at the past couple of times these two sides have met they'd never feel a disappointment like the amount of goals that have been scored between these two sides over the past couple of meetings have been insane like I mean I know Villa haven't been among the goals as of recently and they drew nil nil away at Chelsea in their last FA Cup game So, but, but I do think here you know home atmosphere at Villa Park in such a big big game which is massive for top four for Villa I think the crowd's going to be up for it like it's going to be a very very hostile atmosphere here at uh, Villa Park and I think the Villa players are really going to going to want to prove something here in this one as well Newcastle like however I do think Villa will just be that way bit more motivated in this one to uh, get the win in front of their home support I'm going to say here's another goal fest there's going to be six goals in this one Aston Villa though I'm going to say winning 4-2 it's going to be an amazing game here at Villa Park where one where Villa will be the better side and Newcastle will fall to yet another defeat here in the Premier League I'm going to say though uh, after after about 10 minutes uh, Newcastle will take the lead in this one I think Anthony Gordon will catch them on the break it's going to be a delightful goal past Emmy Martinez and despite um, me saying Villa will comfortably win this one I'm going to say after 10 minutes they'll be in the back foot and Newcastle will get a massive goal putting themselves ahead here away from home however I think after that Aston Villa are just going to dominate the game and I'm going to say at half time they will find themselves
themselves in a 3-1 lead. I'm going to say Ollie Watkins will score five minutes on, or five or ten minutes on from Anthony Gordon opening the scoring. He'll make a 1-1 then in this one. Then I'm going to say in the, uh, with about 10 or 15 minutes left in the half, in around the half hour mark, and we're going to say Moussa Diaby will put Villa ahead in this one, making a 2-1. And then I'm going to say right in the stroke of half time, Villa will get a penalty, and Douglas Louise will convert from the spot, making a 3-1 here at Aston Villa, going into half time. Then in the second half, I'm going to say Villa continue to dominate, however, there won't be too many goals in the second half. We're going to say that with 15 minutes left in the match, John Duran from the bench will come on. He'll make it 4-1 in this one, pretty much copying off what it's going to be. An amazing display here from Aston Villa. And he'll make a 4-1 then with 15 minutes to go. Then I'm going to say, though, right on right in the final kick of the game, pretty much, I'm going to say Tino Livermento is going to score an absolute screamer from 30 yards out as a consolation goal here for Newcastle in this one. It's going to be one of the goals of the season. However, unfortunately for Newcastle, it's going to mean nothing in the end as they'll be in Embarrassing as they'll be embarrassed here away at Aston Villa as Unai Emery's men will put in another uh, a brilliant performance of the season as they continue to push for top four come uh, the end of May or June time. So Aston Villa four, Newcastle two. That's what I've gone with here in this one. Obviously, you know Newcastle still very well could get something out of this one. However, I'm going to say Aston Villa are amazing in the day, and in the end they will just be a lot more motivated than Newcastle to get the result in this one. Villa's good form will continue as New. Castle's bad form will also continue. Next match then we go to the Etihad as Manchester City are hosting Burnley. Big, big game in this one. Vincent Company's homecoming obviously back at the Etihad. Obviously he will get a good um, reception from the City fans. I mean City uh, obviously a massive 1-0 win away at Tottenham. Finally winning at the Tottenham Hotspur ground and finally scoring a goal at the Tottenham Hotspur ground as well um, in their at the Cup ground for sending them through to the next round which is definitely massive there for Man City. Whereas Burnley, I think they're already out of the FA Cup. I could be mistaken. I think they are. I think they are already out of the FA Cup. So they've had more of the rest. However, City definitely are very well the better side. It's going to be one of them games, lads, where Burnley are just terrible. City blitzing. It's going to be a massive five 0 victory here. I'm going to say for Manchester City in this one. We're going to say at half time it's going to be three 0 City. I think Jeremy Doku after about twenty minutes after a slow enough start here in this one, Doku will finally find the back of the net, and in the end here City will take the. Won the lead after 20 minutes. Then I'm going to say 10 minutes on from that, Kevin De Bruyne on his first start, I do believe, back from injury. I'm going to say then he will get his first goal back at the Etihad. He'll make a 2 0 then in this one. And right before half time, I'm going to say Phil Foden is going to cap off what is going to be an amazing display in the first half for Manchester City as they'll be up 3 0 here at half time against a demotivated Burnley side. Then I'm going to say in the second half, City will just continue to dominate possession, not creating too much, however, dominating the game overall. We're going to say on the arm mark with half an hour to go, Kevin De Bruyne will find the back of the net once again. He'll make it 4-0 then in this one. And then I'm going to say in injury time, Erling Haaland, yes I'm going to say Erling Haaland will make an appearance from the bench and I'm going to say then in injury time he will cap off what it's going to be an amazing performance by City from a top in from a corner and in the end here Haaland's goal will cap off an amazing 5 goal victory for Manchester City. So City 5, Burnley 0. That's what I've gone with here in this one. I think really no explanation needed Burnley won't be too great defensively City are just going to be amazing going forward and at the end here that result's really going to reflect on what the performances were like from the both from both teams in this one Next game then we head off to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium as Tottenham are hosting Brantford. The Bays, a big, big game here in this one, obviously. Brantford, of course, have had a lot more rest time than Tottenham, so they could be the more well-rested side after their 2-1 victory and a massive win at that at home to Nottingham Forest last time out. Whereas Tottenham, you know, losing at home to City, they're out of the FA Cup. Any chance of them winning trophies this season is practically gone once again. 16 years now, trophies for Tottenham, which really is a terrible start for them. So maybe you could say they're demotivated coming in this one however I still do think Ange is going to demand 100% from his team uh, for the rest of the Premier League season and I think his team are going to respond to that I think in the end here Tottenham should have enough to win this one I'm going to say here they win this one 2-1 in the end here at home to Brantford I'm going to say though at half time they're going to be on the ropes Tottenham and it'll be down 1-0 I'm going to say right in the stroke of half time Ivan Tony, a player he's well and truly back at full steam I'm going to say then he will score his first away goal for Brantford another goal back uh, since his suspension I'm going to say then he'll make it 1-0 right 
right before half time as Tottenham will, will, will be going into the break. 1 0 down here at home to the Bays. But I'm going to say though, Tottenham should be able to come back in this one. I'm going to say within the first 10 minutes of the second half, they're going to have an amazing response. And Timo Werner is going to get his first goal in a Tottenham shirt. He'll make a 1 1 then in this one. And well, Tottenham will be back into this one. They'll begin to dominate the game a lot more. And with 10 minutes to go, then I'm going to say corners whipped in. And Mickey Van de Ven will step up a bullet header in past them. Flecking and Nets, and I'm going to say in the end here, a beautiful header from Van de Ven will seal all three points here from Tottenham, completing a comeback here at home to Brantford. So Tottenham 2, Brantford 1. That's what I've gone with here in this one. I think in the end, Tottenham should be able to get it done in the end. I think they will get a bit of a score in the first half. However, they will be all right. And in the end here, should be able to get a big, big three points here at home to the Bees. Next match then, it should be the biggest game of the match week as Liverpool are hosting Chelsea at all. Field. Big, big game here in this one. Obviously, these two sides in a couple of weeks' time are going to be competing against each other uh, for the Carby Cup. However, you know, like, um, if you look at the past couple of times these two teams have played, like, it never really um, is exciting. Like, midweek game at Anfield, I can't really see it being too exciting, in my opinion. I'm going to say it, lads. It's going to be yet another nil nil draw here in this one. Don't watch this game. It's going to be terrible, as it always is. Like, and it's, it's going to be nil nil in the Carby Cup final as well. Bet you. It's not, Liverpool with Chelsea is never a good game here and it's once again going to be a poor enough game here in this one in the end here Liverpool nil, Chelsea nil. that's what I've gone with here in this one as I do believe neither side will be good enough in the day and in the end here although Liverpool probably will be the better side I'm going to say that Chelsea will be able to hold out for a draw and yet another boring encounter between these two sides next match then we go to the London Stadium as West Ham United are hosting Bournemouth now this is a big big game here one with a lot of potential as well Obviously, you know, West Ham have had a lot of rest time. They haven't played in a very long time. Neither have Bournemouth, although Bournemouth, I think, played a Thursday night in their uh, FA Cup uh, match. A massive 5 0 win at home to Swansea City. So that was a massive win there for Bournemouth. And they definitely very well have the goals among them at, at this moment in time. And very well will be aiming to do so again here in this one. Score plenty of goals left, right, and centre. It's going to be interesting to see, you know, uh, what does go down here in this one. I think in the end, you know, West Ham still can't get it done. They're at home, like, whoever. Ever. Bournemouth are in good form I could probably even say they're in better form like both these sides are in good form like so it could, it could go either way like it definitely could very well go, go either way in this one however here's what I think is going to go down here between West Ham and Bournemouth on Thursday night I'm going to say at half time here it is going to be we're going to say 1-1 one, one in this one I think both sides will be good enough here in the first half and neither side will be able to be separated as 1-1 one, one will be the score going into the break I'm going to say after 15 minutes Jared Bowen will open the score in here for the Hammers. He'll make it 1 0 with a very, very good finish. And in the end, here West Ham will get off to a flying start, leading 1 0 here at home to the Cherries. Then I'm going to say 10 minutes left in the first half. We're going to say Bournemouth will find an equalizer through Justin Clivert in this one. And in the end, here Clivert's goal will have things all squared up 1 1 going into half time. Then I'm going to say in the second half, West Ham, just like the first half, will start very, very fast and very, very well at that. I'm going to say after five minutes, Kurt Zuma will rise from the corner putting it in past um, past Neto and Nets and at the end here West Ham will take an early 2-1 lead here in the second half as they did in the first half but I'm going to say though uh, Bournemouth will hit back at them they'll be the better team overall in the second half and with 20 minutes to go then I'm going to say Dominic Solanke will make a 2-2 in this one as Bournemouth will be back into this one aiming for a point or possibly even more then I'm going to say there's a corner in the 95th minute and it's put in by a bullet header by Chris Methem. And that means, lads, I'm going to say here, Bournemouth win this one 3-2 away from home. Yes, I'm going to say in the end here, Methem with a bullet header is going to seal all three points here for Bournemouth on the road as their good form will continue. West Ham are going to battle it in the end here. They won't be too bad overall, the Hammers. However, in the end here, I'm, I'm going to say Bournemouth will have nothing to tank and their fight back will be amazing to see them all three points here um, away from home. So, West Ham 2, Bournemouth 3. That's what I've gone with here in this one. I do believe here that uh, Bournemouth will, in the end, just about get the win here in this one. And in the end here, I'm going to say West Ham will battle it despite being playing well. And in the end, Bournemouth will 
will continue their very, very good run with a massive three points here at home to West Ham. Or where should I say to West Ham? The final match of the match week then we go to the Molyneux as Wolves are hosting Man United. Big, big game in this one, obviously, like Man United last time out in their FA Cup tie, a massive 4 2 victory away at Newport County to send us through to the next round. So that was very, very good to see there. Uh, Wolves are playing as well, like, well, they beat their uh, big Midlands rivals, West Brom 2 0 and a massive and a very a very rivalry game like there was a very heated rival game rival game there so i mean that was good to see definitely but i mean they're definitely very well after beating their rivals 2-0 west brom i'm going to say here they're going to be fired up to win this one and united once again like not looking too great against newport if you haven't seen my reaction for that video already then watch it after this one but i, I was unimpressed with how we played overall against newport and the molyneux is never an easy place for us to go either so you know i cannot see us winning this one if I'm being honest like it's going to be yet another very poor performance by us in this one uninspiring at that as well I'm going to say in the end here Wolves will get a massive 1-0 victory here at home United I'm going to say the goal will come after about 20 minutes in this one Matthias Cunha will ch a lob it over I'm going to say by um, I think it'll be Onana back I think Onana is going to be back it's going to be very poor from Onana coming way too far off his line Cunha will lob it over him it's going to be an amazing goal overall for Wolves and in the end here that goal in the first half after 20 minutes is going to see it out, see it out here for Wolves as they will dominate the game United will look very very poor undeserved of a win and Wolves will be the deserved team here as they'll get a massive three points at home to United so Wolves nil or Wolves won Man United nil as we have gone with here then in this one now we'll end today's match our uh, uh, Premier League predictions everybody I hope you enjoy it remember to like share subscribe and turn on notifications thank you all for supporting the channel once again I really do appreciate it and see you all once again at KDFG very very soon.